Odin Photon Sailor Starlight is... <sighs> oh, Odin. It's a catastrophic failure of epic proportions. It's rather mind-boggling how gloriously this movie managed to suck. To fully understand why, here's a brief and possibly factually incorrect history behind the movie. First, there was space battleship Yamato, originally meant to be the brainchild of Yoshinobu Nishizaki, but underwent many alterations in his concept when they brought about Leiji Matsumoto. Yamato went on to become absolutely massive in Japan. Now everyone on board Yamato knew the main reason it was a success was because of Matsumoto, who later went on to create other massive hits like Captain Harlock and Galaxy Express 39. This did not make the original creator Nishizaki very happy at all. Yamato was meant to be his baby, so he gathered up a budget to rival the space program and planned out a movie trilogy called Odin. And the movie bombed in spectacular fashion. It's over two hours long with absolute god tier animation. The ship is one of the most awe-inspiring spectacles in anime, at least it is the first 20 odd times you see it, because you get to see the ship from every conceivable angle through the entire spectrum of colours and flashy lights surrounding it during the movie. The ship jumps through various forms of acceleration and wormholes and other techno babbling multicoloured space drifts, often having nothing to do with the plot at the time. They simply wanted to show the ship travelling through yet another space dome to the backing track of 80s power ballads. <laughs> You also get to see the inside of the ship from every conceivable angle. Christ knows how the crew don't go mad with all the sheer number of flashy lights, looking more like the inside of a disco than a spaceship. Certainly doesn't help that the crew spend quite a lot of the movie running about, high-fiving each other, playing a complicated version of musical chairs, than one of the movie's many sequences that act as nothing more than a music video for cheesy 80s Japanese rock band loudness. <laughs> Plot? Oh yeah, that exists. Somewhere between all the shots of running crew members, flashy lights and accelerating spaceships, a plot appears. While going through an extended launch sequence that lasts 30 fucking minutes of running around poking flashing lights, the crew discover a survivor who tells them to go to a random planet and find a flying saucer. But first they have to get to this mysterious planet. So cue even more running about in flashy lights and warp drives. On this flying saucer, there are mythical runes that the girl they've picked up, being the walking plot device that she is, is mysteriously able to translate. She tells them it's from the planet Odin. Wait, I mean... Odin! For that's what she calls it. And so the crew decide to set off for Odin. By the way, all of that takes over an hour. An hour for the plot to actually begin. It's not like we're getting to know the crew in this time, because none of them are saying anything character building wise. They do occasionally spout techno babble, but otherwise they just run around a lot pushing flashy buttons. But back to the plot. Now their task is to search for Odin. And you know what that means? More pushing flashy buttons and shots of the spaceship travelling through multicoloured space holes. Thankfully at this point, a Norse god shows up and sends a swarm of spaceships after them. No, I have no fucking idea why the Norse god showed up, but he made something different happen, so I didn't question it. This space dogfighting sequence, as beautifully animated as the rest of the movie by the way, resulted in some of the characters on board getting injured and dying, which would have had more effect if Odin had bothered to tell us who any of these characters on board were. It's hard to get emotionally attached to a techno babble sprouter who pushes flashy buttons. So now the crew have to find the home planet of the people who attack them. And you know what this means? More running around pushing flashy buttons and shots of the spaceship flying through multicolored flashy streams of lights that cause epileptic fits. Then they reach the planet Bagel, and... Oh fuck it, I'm not gonna bore you any longer. They fight bad guys, push a big self-destruct button, a few more characters I never knew the names of died. And best of all, the crew never find Odin. Remember, this is meant to be part of a trilogy. They're still ages away from finding Odin yet. That means there's plenty more time for coloured space jumps, pushing shiny buttons and running around the ship high-fiving each other. Odin is a nonsensical, boring mess. But what puts it up there as one of the worst anime of all time is that it's a nonsensical boring mess for over two hours. At least Mars of Destruction, review forthcoming, had the decency to end after a mere 20 minutes. The best part about Odin is the ending credits. Firstly, because it means a shagging movie is finally over. Secondly, because it has a live action concert scene of loudness playing the movie's signature cheesy power ballad. <laughs>